Hello, and welcome, dear saints of St. Peter Evangelical Lutheran Church, as well as all of our dear brothers and sisters in Christ who are joining us here this afternoon. Well, today on this Tuesday, July the 13th, we again have this great pleasure to join together around God's Word, uh, to hear His Word, let, let it dwell within us so richly here, and also to hear uh, from a cho church father, as we will hear a devotion today from Pastor Bo Geertz in this help for, helpful book, To Live with Christ. And so before we dive into our devotion here, let's open up with a word of prayer. We pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, without your help, our labor is useless, and without your light, our search is in vain. Invigorate our study of your holy word, that by due diligence and right discernment, we may establish ourselves and others in your holy faith. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Well, today our devotion from the Word of God will come from the book of 1 Corinthians. We'll be in chapter 7, as we're right about the middle of the book here, reading verses 17 to 40. And so we open our devotion here with 1 Corinthians chapter 7. Only let each person lead the life that the Lord has assigned to him, and to which God has called him. This is my rule in all the churches. Was anyone at the time of his call already circumcised? Let him not seek to remove the marks of circumcision. Was anyone at the time of his call uncircumcised? Let him not seek circumcision. For neither circumcision counts for anything, nor uncircumcision, but keeping the commandments of God. Each one should remain in the condition in which he was called. Were you a bondservant when called? Do not be concerned about it. But if you can gain your freedom, avail yourself of the opportunity. For he who has called in the Lord as a bondservant is a freed man of the Lord. Likewise, he who was free when, when called is a bondservant of Christ. You were bought with a price. Do not become bondservants of men. So, brothers, in whatever condition each was called, there let him remain with God. Now concerning the betrothed, I have no command from the Lord, but I give my judgment as one who by the Lord's mercy is trustworthy. I think that in the view of the present distress, it is good for a person to remain as he is. Are you bound to a wife? Do not seek to be free. Are you free from a wife? Do not seek a wife. But if you do marry, you have not sinned. And if a betrothed woman marries, she has not sinned. Yet those who marry will have worldly troubles, and I would spare you that. This is what I mean, brothers. The appointed time has grown very short. From now on, let those who have wives live as though they had none, and those who mourn as though they were not mourning, and those who rejoice as though they were not rejoicing, and those who buy as though they had no goods, and those who deal with the world as though they had no dealings with it. For the present form of this world is passing away. I want you to be free from anxieties. The unmarried man is anxious about the things of the Lord, how to please the Lord. But the married man is anxious about worldly things, how to please his wife, and his interests are divided. And the unmarried or betrothed woman is anxious about the things of the Lord, how to be holy in body and spirit. But the married woman is anxious about worldly things, how to please her husband. I say this for your own benefit, not to lay any restraint upon you, but to promote good order and to secure your undivided devotion to the Lord. If anyone thinks that he is not behaving properly toward his betrothed, if his passions are strong and it has to be, let him do as he wishes. Let them marry. It is no sin. But whoever is firmly established in his heart, being under no necessity, but having his desire under control, and has determined this in his heart, to keep her as his betrothed, he will do well. So then he who marries his betrothed does well, and he who refrains from marriage will do even better. A wife is bound to her husband as long as he lives, but if her husband dies, she is free to be married to whom she wishes, only in the Lord. Yet in my judgment she is happier if she remains as she is. And I think that I too have the Spirit of God. Thus far, our reading there from 1 Corinthians. Now with those uh, words in mind, those verses in mind here, we hear this devotion from Pastor Bo Geertz. He writes, the one who owns a portion of Christ's kingdom still lives in the world. He has, however, a new relationship with the world. Before, it was the world that brought meaning to his life. He didn't really count on anything else. 
The idea was to survive, seize his opportunities, and try to make a better life for himself. However, when he realizes what life's all about, these things are no longer of vital importance. There are many other important things that give content and meaning to life, and in the final analysis, are decisive in whether a person has succeeded. Therefore, Paul gives us the guiding principle that everyone should remain in the state in which he was called. A profession, a position in the community, a place in the family, normally implies God's calling. Here is a mission I've received from God. I'm in the company of people I can serve and help. I have the opportunity to create something good in certain situations. There are situations, however, that are so corrupt and evil that I have to free myself from them to be able to serve God. When I serve Christ, I begin to attach new values to other calls, such as professions and positions in society. All Christians are servants of Christ. They belong to Him. Paul isn't speaking here about society and our place in it. He does that in his letter to the Romans. Here, he's expecting the second coming of Christ to happen soon enough that he and his contemporaries will experience it. That's obvious when we read his advice concerning marriage and everything else that touches our existence in the world. He emphasizes, however, that this is only advice. Some of his advice concerns relationships we have no comparison to today. Such relationships occurred where men and women, married or not, lived together in celibacy during times of prayer and fasting, as in a monastery. These probably were the people Paul subsequently referred to with a word that in our translation, freely and incorrectly, was expressed as your unmarried daughter. Paul liked that, but emphasized that you didn't sin if you abandoned that kind of life. Later, Paul expected that he would die before Christ's coming, and that the church would have to prepare itself for a longer period of waiting. That meant new attitudes regarding the work on earth. But it doesn't change our basic Christian outlook. We regard the world as something that is solely of temporary importance. And thus far, our devotion there from Pastor Geertz. And so here we hear both Paul and Pastor Geertz really touching on uh, one central point that is so important for us to hear today. And it's this. Our, we are not meant for this world. This is not where our content and meaning of life is founded. You know, Paul starts off that way. He says, you've been called by God, right? You've been called by God in all these different areas of your life. Pastor Geertz points that out. You know, if you're in a family, that's a calling from God. If you're a mother, a brother, a sister, uh, whatever, God calls you in that place. If you have a job, God is calling you to serve in that job. If you live in a, in a city, in a neighborhood, in a community, whatever it might be, you have people there whom God is calling you to serve and to help. You know, we use sometimes the, the fancy word for this, vocation. You have many different vocations in this life, but all of them come from God. We don't need to go searching for all these different things to do to serve the Lord or to serve our neighbor. God gives them to us in all these magnificent ways. And so knowing this, as Paul says, we can be content with that. We don't need to do what the unbeliever needs to do, which is to try to find meaning in this world. To, uh, as Pastor Geert says, to try to survive, to seize opportunities, to, to get more and more stuff for themselves. We don't need that. We find all of our meaning in those callings and those vocations that God has given us. And so it doesn't matter whether I'm rich or poor, whether I have this job or, or that job, whether I'm in a large family or have virtually no family at all. God has given me many different callings. and I'm content to do what he has called me to do. Now, as Pastor Geertz touched on then, then Paul went on this kind of lengthy thing about marriage and how uh, he says, look, this is advice. This is not a commandment of God. It's not sinning one way or the other. But his advice uh, concerning marriage was for those in his day, hey, think about not being married just like you might think of being married. But the point wasn't really that marriage is bad or, or marriage is good and being single is bad. That's not his point at all. Instead, he's, he's really emphasizing that we want to not focus on this world. 
Where if you're married, that can be that can be a problem. I, I'm always thinking about how I can make my wife happy, how I could care for her, how I can do things to, to really better her life. And so Paul says, just be careful, all right? Be careful when you get into a, a relationship like a marriage or, or even a friendship or other things like that, that your focus doesn't turn from Christ back to this world because it's so easy to have that happen. And so it's good for us to hear those words from Paul and to realize that, yes, we can be single or we can be married. It's not a sin either way. But in the end, what we really need to be concerned about is Christ, is, is fulfilling those vocations that God has given us and not letting our attention, not letting our focus turn back to the things of this world. If all we're doing is just to get ahead in this world, to, to just make this life better and better, well, then we have failed the callings that God has given us. But if what we do is always about Christ, is always thinking about how we can serve our neighbor, help those around us, well, then we are not focused on the things of this world. We are listening to the voice of Christ, who himself has called us to those very vocations, those very callings in this life. And so, dear saints, as we hear these words today, I pray that, that you might sit down and think about all those callings that your Lord has given you and realize that those really are uh, God's callings in your life and not to be focused on this world, but to be focused on what God himself has called you to do, which is to proclaim Christ out in the world, to show love to your friends, your families, your neighbors, and above all, to listen to him, to his word, to his message of salvation, that indeed through Christ you are saved. So thanks be to God for all of his vocations, all of his callings, and for the fact that he has saved us for a much better world that is to come. And with that, we'll bring our devotion here today to a close with our collect of the day, our prayer for this last Sunday. We pray. Heavenly Father, you granted your prophet strength to resist the temptations of the devil and encourage to proclaim repentance. Give us pure hearts and minds to follow your Son faithfully, even into suffering and death. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Well, again, dear saints, thank you so much for joining me here this afternoon. And may the Lord's peace and blessings be upon you.